What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. Today I'm going to be giving you kind of like a little mini review of the Prusa i3 MKS Plus. Um, I got this printer about a month ago now and I've printed uh, quite a bit with it. And uh, yeah, I just want to give you my thoughts. It's not going to, not going to be really an in-depth review, just um, going over my first impressions and uh, kind of the pros and cons of it. So if anybody's interested in getting a Prusa, uh, they can kind of, you know, take this, uh, yeah, hopefully this helps inform them on their decision. But first, um, subscribe to the channel and drop a like, please. Like 94% of you guys that watch the videos are not subscribed. So that would be a huge help if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free to do. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe later. Um, but definitely helps out with the channel metrics and the algorithm and whatnot. So drop a like, put a comment below. Even if it sucks, let me know if, if the video sucks. If I'm doing something wrong, uh, yeah, drop a comment down below. Let me know. Any engagement helps out. Um, but yeah, the Prusa, it's been a great printer. Um, I'll go off, I guess, I made a little list of pros and cons. I'll read them off. So we'll start off with the pros. Um, basically pros, good print quality. Um, yeah, I was pretty impressed with how it printed right out of the box. So after I got it built, um, I did quite a few of the test prints that were on there. And uh, for example, this Benchy, I don't know if you can see this, see if I can get everything to focus good. This Benchy was uh, right off the SD card. And this thing printed uh, pretty dang good. I don't see any imperfections. You could argue the bottom a little bit. Uh, that's just bed adhesion, me not having the um, the baby stepping not 100% set right at the time. But uh, yeah, this was straight off the card too. This is supposed to look rustic or whatever. It looks like there's a hole in her head there, but uh, that's the way it's made to look. But uh, literally straight off the SD card. Um, and this is a test cube I ran. This one was uh, at 0.2 millimeters. Let's see if we get the focus here. This is a calibration cube that was, um, excuse me, this one was on the printer, but I, uh, I sliced this and did my own. Um, for comparison, here's one off my Ender. Get it to focus here. So it prints, uh, it's kind of hard to show you that one. It prints good print quality. So here is a Benchy off my Ender. Um, it's got some imperfections in the tongue. It's hard to get it to focus. I don't know if it's focusing good there. Sorry if it's not. Uh, this Benchy turned out good though. There's a little bit of, um, I don't know what you even call that, little imperfections in the tongue there, uh, but it came out pretty good. Um, this is also, this was pointed at, or printed at 0.2. This is off the Ender uh, Deadpool bust or whatever you want to call it. And this thing turned out uh, really good. I was super happy with it. That's on an Ender, which is a $280 printer. And um, yeah, this is a, a, a pretty expensive printer. This was pointed at or printed at 0.2. Um, this is a Glock 19 replica. Uh, not replica. Yeah, it's a exact size or whatever. Um, but the, the, the quality, it's two pieces. I printed it in two pieces and glued it together. But uh, the quality is extremely good. I was, uh, I was very happy with the way it turned out. Sorry if it's not focusing well. You can really see the... Um, it looks really good there. I was, I was pretty impressed with that. Um, yeah, it turned out great. The print quality, this was straight out of the box too. Some little dudes I downloaded and uh, printed for my kid, little Pikachu and Charizard. Um, anyways, most of those prints came straight off the SD card. I didn't change a single setting on it. So it prints uh, right out of the box, good quality. You could argue too though, if you don't build it correctly, um, it's not gonna print good. So I'm pretty picky about the way um, I put everything together, so I took my time. I made sure everything was, you know, properly aligned, tensioned correctly. I didn't over tighten things. I made sure my frame was uh, perfectly uh, level and square and trimmed properly before I continued to build. So little things like that during the build process will go a long ways with your quality. So um, if you are looking for high quality prints, make sure you spend the time to uh, to build it correctly and make sure everything's aligned. That goes with any printer though. So even with your Ender 3 or any other uh, printer you put together, make sure you spend the time to build it correctly or you're not gonna get good quality prints if it's not level. So number one, uh, good quality prints. Uh, number two, pros, uh, good customer service. So I put best customer service. I haven't dealt with any other companies, so I don't really know 100%. Um, I've emailed Prusa twice and gotten responses back within um, one was in a couple hours and the other one was the next day. Um, super helpful, super polite. Yeah, I, I uh, definitely am surprised or was impressed with the level of custom, customer service. So if you buy a Prusa product, you're going to get that level of customer service. Um, 
Number three is premium parts. For the most part, all of these parts are uh, good parts. Um, a lot of it is printed, so I guess you would say, um, I guess that's debatable. Um, they're using good motors. They're using good, uh, good motors. They're using, uh, I forget the name of the brand. It's a true um, E3D, whatever, Titan um, extruder. They're using quality parts on the extruder. The rods, um, power supply, and the board are all very nice. Um, all the parts are printed, or excuse me, not all the parts. A large percent of the parts are just uh, PETG printed from the Prusa factory. They're nice quality prints. Um, but yeah, I was uh, um, I was impressed with the level of uh, of quality from the parts. The bed comes uh, or it comes already comes with a good PEI bed sheet, which is quite nice. Um, moving on, sorry, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. It's direct drive, so it's uh, good for flexible. So if you plan to uh, print any direct drive or any type of uh, flexible filament, uh, this is ready for that. So you don't need to do any other kind of mods or modifications to it. Um, it's ready to print flexibles. It's also um, an all metal hot end, so you can print abrasives like carbon fiber or whatever other types of abrasives there are. Um, I don't really print any, so I don't know. But I know it's got an all metal hot end, so if you wanted that as an option, you could print uh, whatever you want. So, um, after it's built too, this was another pro, after it's built, you don't need to tweak it anymore. So um, with the Ender 3, Ender 3 V2, um, this could have just been from my experience and whatnot, because that was my first printer, but um, I had to do a lot of adjustments on my Ender 3 um, after I built it. With the Prusa, after it's built, you're done. Um, you don't have to do any more tweaking. I really like that. Um, I was extremely, I guess jaded is the right word, I don't know. Uh, with after the build process, so that's uh, when we get to the cons, I'll uh, talk about that. But um, after having it uh, built, and I've been using it for a while now, uh, it's extremely reliable. So I haven't had any issues with it all. Um, it prints really good. Uh, moving on, another con, or uh, excuse me, a pro, is the Prusa Slicer. So it's super basic. Um, you don't have to, uh, yeah, you don't have to, tweak any of the settings, the Prusa Slicer. It's basically looks like a copy of Kira that they've modified. I, I imagine that's probably what it is. Uh, it's their own version of Kira. It, it seems a lot like that. Um, but anyways, they already have, you, you tell them you, in your slicer, you input what, you know, the infill, the temperature, and it takes care of the rest for you. Um, yeah, I haven't had to mess with any of the settings at all, and it's printed really well. Um, the Prusa Slicer, it's super basic. Uh, it's got custom profiles set up. So, um, yeah, and then all metal hot end, already, already talked about that. Um, so, yeah, moving on to the cons, uh, the price. This is, uh, for the kit alone, it's $750, and then for the fully built, if you want it shipped to you completely already assembled, it's 1000 bucks. And it takes, um, I don't know, a month at least, something like that, I believe. The kit, the DIY kit, is at least uh, four to six weeks, and then... It's longer if you want the, uh, the fully built version. So if you don't want to put it together yourself, uh, you're gonna pay a lot more and you're gonna wait a lot longer. Um, that's mainly the cons. The only cons that I have is the price is extremely high and it takes, it took me roughly 10 hours to build it and that was with my wife helping me. I'm sure I probably could have done it quicker. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty uh, anal and picky with putting everything together. So I took my time and made sure it was all done right. But it took me and my wife about 10 hours, you know, um, after dinner and whatnot, working on it for two, three hours a night until we got it finished. Um, if you enjoy tinkering and whatnot or, or building it, uh, that's a, a pro, I guess, for you. Um, one of the other things too is the Prusa. I forgot to uh, mention this in the in the pros. Excuse me. The Prusa, you don't need to do any more upgrades to it. So it's already got the awesome bed leveling. I'll overlay that too here. Um, I'll show you a video of that. Uh, the auto bed leveling, the ABL, I believe they call it Super Penda. Their Super Penda setup um, is super fast. It's done heating up, it heats faster, and it levels extremely fast. Super impressed with that. That's one thing I hate about the BL Touch. Um, I'm getting ready to rip that off my Ender 3 V2 right now. Actually, it's really starting to piss me off. But um, if you're getting an ABL, go with the Easy ABL from TH3D or just level your bed manually. I think the BL Touch is a waste of, uh, of money, a waste of time. That's just my opinion though. 
The Super Penda, the auto bed leveler on the Prusa, super fast. Like I said, I'll overlay the video so you can see what that looks like now. Um, yeah, it's already got direct drive. It's already got the PEI bed sheet. It's already got the filament runout sensor. It's already got, um, what else is there for upgrades? Filament runout, um, direct drive, all metal hot end, PEI bed sheet, dual Z access. Um, yeah, you can add the MMU, the multi-material, whatever the heck it's called if you want to. That's probably the only other upgrade. So. You can view that as a pro or a con. If you are the type of person that enjoys tinkering and upgrading, uh, you know, when you get a couple extra bucks buying a cool new part for your printer, then the Prusa isn't really uh, for you, I'd say. After it's after it's built, it's done. You're not gonna, I don't, there's nothing else to put on this thing. I can print little weird, um, you know, uh, cosmetic things to put on it or whatever, but it's nothing to improve or change the print quality can I really put on it except for the, um, the MMU, the multi-material printer thing that allows you to print multiple different uh, types of material. Um, yeah, so those are the only cons that I have really is the price. It's extremely expensive and uh, the build time. It took like 10 hours to build it. Um, so you can view those however you want, I guess. So these are just my thoughts on the matter. Um, you could buy three Ender 3 V2s for the same price and uh, or Ender 3 Pros and... Um, yeah, or you can just get one and, you know, slowly, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks more and have arguably just as good a printer. Um, I don't see any quality difference at all. Um, I've got some upgrades on my Ender 3. You can see it behind me here. Um, I've done, it's still uh, Bowden tube. Um, I've upgraded the extruder. Uh, what else is done to it? The extruder, it's got a BL touch on it, the Bowden tube and a PEI bed sheet. Um, that's arguably another hundred bucks max sorry to turn around here i was just trying to memorize the upgrades i have on there i have a video of all the upgrades i've done on my ender 3 v2 if you're wanting to check that out um, i'll link that in the description below but anyways yeah i mean it's a good printer it's the price thing if you're the type of person that wants to um build it and be done with it and only print you're not interested in any other aspects of the hobby really I would say the um, the Prusa is a good pick if you got a little bit of extra cash. Um, if you're somebody that's running on a budget though, and you're actually interested in the hobby and you want to learn more about stuff, and um, yeah, you plan on doing more tweaks and you want to uh, mess with your your printer yourself, then I would the Prusa isn't really. Um, I wouldn't suggest that as a first one. These are just my thoughts though. These are all great printers. Um, I'm just kind of trying to point out the difference. My $280 printer prints just as good as my $750 printer is all I'm saying right now. Um, which is more reliable? I would arguably, I would say the Prusa right now actually. I've had, since the Prusa has been up and running, I haven't had, as, had it as long. But the Prusa has given me zero issues. So um, yeah, I, I mean that's, it is what it is. So anyways, let me check my notes again. Uh, small build surface, that was another uh, thing. I think it's a hair, maybe it's the exact same size. I didn't, I should have checked that before I started the video, excuse me. Um, I believe the bed size is the exact same size as the Ender 3 V2. Um, if you are somebody that's looking for a bigger build surface, then um, that, this isn't the printer for you. Uh, I would recommend something like a CR10. Um, that's another thing too I forgot to mention on the uh, pros and cons. Um, the Pr Prusa community as is, is pretty large, um, don't get me wrong. But there seems to be way more, maybe this is just my experience because that's the communities that I dove into, but there seems to be way more um, community support for the Enders. Um, this could just be my perception because that's the communities I'm involved in. But um, yeah, that's my just my perception of uh, the community, I guess. Anyways, I've ranted a lot. I hope that was uh, informational or you got some insight into um, the Prusa if you're thinking about getting the Prusa. Um, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Also, subscribe to the channel, drop a like. Um, we're going to be doing a uh, giveaway for 2,000 subscribers. We're about to hit that. I really appreciate everybody that's been supporting the channel. Um, we're going to do probably an Amazon gift card. You have to be subscribed, uh, and you have to like the video, and you have to leave a comment below when we do the giveaway video. Not on this video, but when we do the giveaway video, you have to be subscribed. Anyways, I'm done ranting. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Have a good day. Peace.